Okay, how is everybody doing? Good on this beautiful, beautiful March afternoon. It's beautiful outside, trust me. I know the clouds tell you different, but it is beautiful. There's a silver lining around there somewhere. All right, so listen, uh, we're going to do Matthew chapter 7. We're going to make sure this is on too. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. You good? Okay, good. All right. Don't mean to yell. It's just that pastor voice comes out and it's like shouting. All right, so we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7. How many of you guys ever heard of the Sermon on the Mount? Anybody? Sermon amount? Greatest sermon of all time. Okay? I don't care who we've heard give a sermon. This sermon beats everybody's sermon because Jesus literally just breaks everything down right here on Sermon Amount. Now let me give you a little background. So I want you to imagine that Jesus was in the room and healing everybody, doing these wondrous things, and then he stops and everyone's rejoicing that God has healed them, and he just walks away. He goes and sits on top of a of, of a mountain type hill. And he just sits there. The crowd is still rejoicing. The disciples see that he's gone. And they're looking like, where'd Jesus go? Where'd, and, and someone noticed him like he's right up there on the, on, the, on the hill. And he's just sitting down. And so the disciples walk up to him. And they sit down. The, cloud is, the crowd is still rejoicing. So Jesus probably glances over their shoulder. He sees the crowd still happy over the miracles. And he looks at his disciples and he just starts off with, blessed are the poor and blessed are... And he just goes into a full sermon. And listen, he's not standing up sweating, you know, because when you preach, you spit too. He's not sweating and spitting all over the place. He's just sitting down, just gently teaching the disciples, right? And so this is the greatest sermon of all time. And so there are many things he covers in this sermon. What we're going to look at today is a tree and its fruit, Mm, right? <laughs> and so I'm going to read to you from verse 15 in Matthew chapter 7 all the way to verse 20, 27. So just bear with me. It says, not everyone, excuse me, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, are figs from thistles. So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And they will declare, that, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine does them will be like a wise man who's built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does them uh, and does not do them, excuse me, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Right now, Jesus is, is saying all of this. This is how he concludes the Sermon on the Mount. You know, typically, pastors, what we do is, you know, we give you five points. This is the fifth point, and then I'm going to close with two other points, right? That's how we do, right? And, and, and the end of anything, any speech is supposed to wrap it all up together. So the end of the Sermon on the Mount is this. This is how Jesus wraps everything together. So the first part, he says, a tree and its fruit. He said, well, listen, be aware of false prophets. You have to understand, in Jesus' time, there were many people claiming to be him. There was one guy who claimed to be, you know, the, the Messiah. And he said, we're going to go to the Red Sea um, and God's going to part the Red Sea. He's got to walk in there and we're going to survive. Guess what happened to everybody? They died. They drowned. Now, the guy who told him to do that, he saw everybody drowning. And was like, I'm going to go back the other way. Right? There are many people doing this. This was very common. So Jesus is saying, listen, beware, because they, they come, they will be here. And these people will have the appearance of godliness. They, they will look the part. They will even say the good Christianese things like, blessed and highly favored. God's got a plan for you. Hey, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Right? They, they will do all those things. But Jesus says, inwardly, they're just wolves. They're looking to devour you. They're looking to destroy you for, the, for whatever reason. Right? And, and then he says, listen, you're going to recognize them by their fruit. Right? If, if you go outside and you see an apple tree, what do you expect on the apple tree? 
apples. Of course, right? <laughs> That's what you think should be on there, right? And, and, and how can you tell if the tree is a good tree? It should have some good fruit. If you go outside and all the, all the fruit is rotten, then what's, what's the tree is probably... Yeah, yeah. You, you would think, right? Yeah. Right? It, it, that's what it's supposed to be. And Jesus is saying, listen, by the fruit that they bear, the way they live their life, the people that they, that they say they're counseling and mentoring, you're going to be able to tell what kind of person they really are. It should bear some fruit. You know, you know how you know if your parents did a good job raising you? Go look in the mirror. Right? If, if you go out there just screaming and doing what you want, you know, y your parents, you know, it's hard to tell people that you did a bad job. It's okay. You, you did a bad job. Let's work on it. But listen, you know a child. Like, people can recognize my kids because they act like me. They have, they have certain standards like me. That, that should be the telltale sign. So Jesus is saying, look at the people that follow them. Look at their lifestyle. Is this what you want? That's how you recognize bad fruit. That's how you recognize this isn't the right person. This, he calls them a diseased tree. They're infecting people around them. He says, look for the one with the good fruit. So you have to be aware of these false prophets. Now listen, the question would be, well, all their false prophets today, can you give me a list, Joe, of everybody who's a false prophet right now? I could, but no, that's not, listen, you have to investigate the matter because this is what we tend to do, right? If, if they have a successful book, their church is filled with 10,000 people. They were on TBN last night, praise the Lord. I saw that. Right? If, if, they are, if they're doing all those things, we follow them instantly. Don't even know what they're talking about, but it, it bet, it's got to be right. Look at them. Right? Listen, that's not what God's called us to do. You're supposed to investigate life. Listen, I'm going to tell you who I follow. I follow people who share the gospel. I follow people whose lives I can see the integrity of how they live. That's who I follow. People of that character. I, I, I read, I read, my favorite thing is to read books by old dead guys. You know why? Because they probably got it right. I, I look at Charles H. Spurgeon. This man preached, I mean, he is the most successful preacher of all time. His books have been published over and over again. They, they, they're even finding uh, sermons that he wrote that no one knew about. But the thing, the reason why I like him, because Charles Spurgeon struggled with depression. Everyone thought he was silly. No one thought he knew what he was talking about. He could barely speak. He was a small man. People ridiculed him. But he gave his all to Jesus. He lived the life of Christ. So I see that fruit. I, I pay attention to that. We can't get caught up in the fame of everything. Because what happens is you have these people who are false prophets. And, and on the last day when they stand before the throne of God, God's going to say, I didn't know you. But we can point to all they're doing, right? We can point to their success. But, but God, listen, I, I look at all the good I did. People came to, to Christ. I had, and you know, I mean, I shared the gospel. And Jesus is making it very clear. No, you did what you wanted to do. I won't allow my name to be defamed. I, I won't allow my glory to be for another. I will always bring and draw people to me. I will do that. But you did not deal with the sin in your heart. You didn't believe in me. You, you got what you wanted out of people. Some people want to go and share the gospel and be known for Jesus because it, it feels good when people call your name. It feels good when people tell me, I like how you preach. That feels really good. It does. And, you know, I go mm, on the inside of my heart. It makes you feel good. But guess what? If I'm doing it for the feeling, then I'm not doing it for Jesus. It feels good to have a title in front of your name. That means you get some of the best seats in the house. I'm Pastor May. Can I have that seat over there? Well, yes, yes, Pastor. Go ahead. Well, thank you. God bless you, my child. Right? It feels good. But if I'm doing it for the title, guess what? I'm really being wicked. Because I'm like a wolf. I'm only going after what I desire, not what the will of God is. Right? And, and so Jesus is making it very clear. Listen, you, this has got to be authentic. That's one of the greatest misconceptions about going to church. If you go to church to feel safe. I'm not going to hell. Why? Because I'm sitting down in the church. Right. Yeah, that, that's going to keep you safe. No, listen, it's got to be a heart issue. My heart has to be for Jesus. This cannot be a joke to me. You know, this has to be real. It's got to be authentic. You've got to live this out. And you've got to do it daily. And Jesus is saying, for those who don't, I'll say I never knew you. But Lord, I went on the mission trip with my church. We went to Haiti for two weeks. I suffered. But Lord, I, 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 we had the canned food drive. But Jesus, my church attendance was excellent. I even went to the Bible study nobody liked. And he's going to say, 
away from me. <laughs> away from me. You knew me not. Now it goes on in verse 24. It says this. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them would be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came. The winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. So Jesus says everyone who, who listens to me has a solid foundation. Now what I like about the rain coming and the wind beating and all that stuff. That lets me know you're going to suffer. Right? It's funny. Jesus suffered on the cross and we figure we don't have to suffer anything. Oh, Lord, don't let me suffer. Like we consider sometimes suffering. My cable bill went up. God, I'm suffering for you. We might consider suffering. Oh, no, my other car has a flat tire. Now I'm going to have to drive my older car to work as opposed to my new one. That's sometimes we consider that suffering. No, we're talking about real suffering. We're talking about you're going to go through. God is going to take you through some heavy and tough times. But if your foundation is sure, if you are falling in Christ, if this is in your heart, God says you'll survive that tough time. Because here's the thing about pain. We, we always see pain as, as, oh, it's bad. I don't want pain. You know what pain brings about? Change. You know, now that I'm getting older in life and now I'm going to the hospital more frequently to make the doctor smile, I realize, you know, I'm suffering some stuff. I got pain. And, you know, I look to God and say, Lord, heal me, set me free, deliver me. Uh, my body should be whole. But then, you know, the 36 year old guy at time is like, hey, my knee hurts really bad. And then God says, I'll give you grace to endure. People betray you, leave you. People said they loved you, will just turn their back on you and stab you and say all these horrible things about it. And God says, endure. All right? Because if this thing is real, it will last. Do you know how if you bake the cake well? Put it in the oven. All right? And what do you have to do with the cake? You got to turn the heat up. If you didn't put any yeast in the cake, guess what you're going to find out? We didn't put any yeast in the cake. If you didn't mix the ingredients well, guess what you find out when you take that soupy cake out the, ooh, this is disgusting. Well, you didn't do it right. It wasn't real. Now, how do you know if you're really following Christ? He allows you to suffer. And guess what that suffering does? It grows you. Do you know I knew how to pray for a baby when my daughter was in the hospital dying? Realize how to pray for a baby. It was real. It, was, it became so easy to me. It became natural. I, I, I realized how to trust God when the bank account and the bills didn't match up. You know, I like things when they stay in the black. That's like totally awesome. But then when you get to dip into that red and you're like, I still got to eat. You know, it's I got to trust God. I, I got to trust God when my health fails me. And God says, well, am I enough? Right. This is the house that is being beat with everything, because the real question for you, <laughs> excuse me, is not about your house. Is it built on a foundation? And you have to ask yourself, is Jesus enough? If God were to take your health, take your wealth, take the people that you love, take your house and everything crash around you. Is he still enough? Or is he not enough? Do you, I can only worship God if I have things. If, if I, everything is perfect in my life. This is what I realized. I, things don't have to be perfect. The foundation has to be sure. Listen, things can go crazy. But if my foundation is sure, I got nothing to worry about. Because Christ has me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. If I'm starving, he'll still take care of me. And here's the cool thing about the Lord. You know, he doesn't provide what you want. That's a misconception. He provides what you need. When people tell me, well, you know, I, I, I trust God's going to feed me. What if God lets you go hungry this week? And what if he just gives you what you need instead? Not what you want, but what you need. You know, one thing that, that I've realized, I've had high blood pressure since I was 16 and probably before that. You know what that's done for me? It's kept me humble. It's kept me to where I have to take instruction from a doctor. And the doctor says, we can't understand why you have high blood pressure, man. You're in great shape, but I have it. So I have to take a pill every day for the rest of my life. I mean, oy vey, that gets annoying over time. But guess what? It's humbled me. Yeah, I've got high blood pressure. Right. It's humbling, right? Because can I have some more chips? No. Okay. Please. They taste really good. <laughs> right? But it's humbling. God allowing me to go through a trial, that's a humbling process. And guess what you get to learn? To trust in God. Now, here's the, other, here's the flip side, though. But those who don't, the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat against the house and it fell. And it says, great was the fall of it. See, this is 
This, 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 is, this has to be real for us. Because if not, when you fall, it is going to be great. You're going to crumble. You're going to see what you're really made of. You're going to see who you really are. This whole thing of going to church and pretending to be a Christian will come to an end. You know who's fake. You know who's been paying attention. Because listen, I love good sermons, but if I'm not going to live it, why am I listening to it? I love reading the Bible daily. I love praying, but if I'm not going to, this isn't real, then what am I doing with my life? It's, it's been a big joke. And the, and the worst part of it is when I get to the end, I say, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, I didn't know you because I wasn't real to you. You didn't seek me because you wanted me. You sought me because it was comfortable. Listen, we don't go to church because we, we don't want to go to hell. We, we don't say I love and submit to Christ because I don't want to die and be eternally tormented. No, we do it because we love him. I had a, 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 a conversation and something hit me when I was talking with them that, you know, people who go in the church, they're, they're ready to die for Jesus right now. Are you ready for that? People who go in the church, are, are, they're, they're, they're really giving a testimony that this is all I really need in life. I don't need anything else. Do you realize the older you get, the more stuff you don't need? Is that just me? Because it's starting to happen to me now. I really don't need that. I look at my driveway. How many cars do I need? How much money do I have to have? Do I need a million dollars? Because I really don't think I need them. I don't want that headache. Taxes and all that. I don't need, ah, I'm, I'm good with 25000 I can. When you're breathing, yeah, okay, I'm good. Like, how much do you need? Or is Christ not enough? My prayer for you is very simple, man. Christ is enough. And if you want to succeed, it, it, listen, it's great to have the 21 successful habits of a leader and the seven habits of leadership and your best life now. Those are awesome things. But guess what? If you really want to know how to live this life, it's funny. If someone asked me, they said, I wish there was a book that w we could have to tell you how to live and, and, and to get through life and, and tell you about God. I was like, you know what, man? I, I think I know one. He was like, what is it? I said, it's called the Bible. And he was like, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Right? If you want to learn how to live for him, it's right here. I want to know more about Jesus. Is there, is there a footnote for that? Can you just tell me? No, listen. What I love about this is, if you want to know Jesus, guess what you got to do? You got to, yeah, you, you got to make time for it. You know, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. When March Madness hits, guess what we're all going to be doing? Glued to the TV like this. Come on, Hawkeyes. Or Cyclones, depending on where you're at. You know, I'm for the Tigers who are probably never going to win. But, you know, if we're going to be glued to the TV. And then you say, hey, you look on Facebook, people can, they post every five minutes. Wow, that's amazing. You got time to do that. Because I have a job. I can't do that. That's, wow. What do you do for a living? Because I need to switch. <laughs> and then you talk about reading the Bible. Oh, man, I'm tired. Oh, I got a long, oh. You want to pray too? Are you one of those long prayers? Are you, are you the short kind of guy like, Jesus help me, love and amen. You know, that's what I'm looking for. Right? You talk about, hey, let's go to church. Uh, how long is service? Do they have donuts or coffee? Because, man, I just, you know, it's, it's funny. There's, there's ice on the ground. Oh, I can't make it to church, but I'm going to make it to work tomorrow because, man, I got to get paid. Right? It's, it's, it's funny because in the end, guess what? God's going to show us you had more than enough time to know me. But you choose to do what you want to do, and you, you just openly rejected me. So, I didn't know you. Listen, Jesus made time for us to get to know us, to love us, and to share his truth with us. I'm just encouraging you, take the time and read this thing. Make sure your foundation is sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, it's not about quoting your fam favorite pastor. I hear that all the time. Well, you know, pastors say, but what does the word say? What do, you, do you know your conviction? Do you know what you believe? Uh, well, pastor said, no, what, is, what does God say? What does his word say? What have you been reading? Like, what has God been telling you? Instead of quoting your favorite pastor of how he broke down this scripture with the exit Jesus, and he did the Hebrew and the Greek, and he brought this on this example he gave was just eye-opening. What about Jesus? What's he been telling you? Is your foundation sure? And man, I hope it is. If it's not... Listen, I, I'm not a big fan of the salvation prayer deal. I, I think it's great, but this, let me tell you why. Because I've had people pray that with me, and they, they didn't believe it. You know what I'm a fan of? People who, God, I give you my all. Welcome to the club. You're saved. God, I turn everything over to you. And then we can struggle through some stuff. But I want to make sure my foundation's sure. I want to know you forevermore. 
I don't want to be a false prophet. I don't want to be a false teacher telling people lies. I want to live for Jesus forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Boy, I love coming here, guys. I tell you what. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We thank you there is none like you, God. We just want to lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ before you. Lord, and, and myself, Lord, just asking to help us make our foundation sure. We don't want to be a foolish person and build a foundation upon sin. We want to build it upon the stability of who you are, our hope and our faith and trust in you, that we may survive the storms as we grow. Help us to embrace change and challenge and pain. Help us to make time for you. Help us to, to, to live this life the way you've called us to. Help us not to be false prophets or, or to lead people astray by just teaching them what to do and not really living it, Lord. Help us to do this because we love you. Lord, for those who don't know you today, I pray that they would just surrender their hearts to you, God, and say, God, I lay it all at your feet. Here I am. I accept Christ as my Savior. I believe in you and I trust you and I follow you faithfully. Lord, we thank you and we love you for this glorious time in your word and encouragement. In Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Amen. All right, I love you guys. I'll be back at, in next.